Hey guys, this is Rene. Welcome back to another video on this channel. Today I will talk about this multi strategy testing program again. And um, I will show you one last thing that might be interesting to you. And it is um, how to put this strategy now uh, into a separate file. So if you're working with different strategies like the moving average, RSI, the stochastic, whatever, um, it will not be as confusing as um, it would be if you would put all of these strategies, like all of these classes in one um, uh, in one source file. So whenever you create a class, it's actually always a good idea to just um, create um, header files for this. So what we can do is we can do something like um, yeah, what I'll do here is um, like we, we have this program already. So I can just go to file, open data folder, go to experts uh, or MQL5 experts, and we will find this program here, right? So there is the multi strategy tester. And I will take um, these files, I will um, cut them out here, and I will create a new folder. Um, I mean, you don't have to do it like this in this folder, but I, I think it's uh, you have a good overview if you have everything in, in, in one folder. And I can say uh, multi-strategy testing program. I mean, you can just choose any name for this folder. You open the folder and you paste the code here. Paste. Like now I have this, um, the code here. And what I do now is, yeah, we don't need the exam. We will create the executable again. I will just copy this and I will say this is now um, dot mqh, oh wait, no, this was not correct, um, dot mqh, and then we can do something like, and you can see it always changes, it also changes like the symbol here, because now it is a header file. And uh, I also change the name here, like multi-strategy, oh wait, this will be renamed, it's not multi-strategy tester anymore, it will be um, moving average strategy. So what we have now is, wait, let me delete this because the path is now different because it's in the subfolder. We will now see the in the navigator that we have the subfolder, multi-strategy testing program. And if we go to the multi-strategy tester MQ5 file, you can see this is the file that uh, contains all the code and also the moving average strategy it also contains, contains all the code. But this is a header file and header files can be used to take pieces of your code and move them into these files because these header files can then be included in your main file. So what I will do in this header file is I will delete all of this code here and I will just keep the um, include of the C trade because we will need it and then we have this class here. So this header file now only holds the C moving average strategy class and nothing else. And this is why the name is moving average strategy .mqh. So if I compile this, this is working, this is correct, but this will not compile into an executable. It will stay the header file always because it's just a file that we can include in other programs. So what I will do here is I will, uh, in the multi-strategy tester, here I can now delete the class because I have it in this header file. And if I compile now, it says the um, uh, the 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 uh, C moving average strategy. It's not known, and this is because it is no longer in this file, because these are two completely separated files. And this file, like the MQH, uh, the MQ5 file, which will be translated in the executable if we click on compile, it does not know the code inside of this file. So what we have to do is we have to include. Um, uh, the moving average strategy. And now we do not use the spiky brackets because it's in the same folder. We can just use um, the quotation signs here. So we say moving average strategy, strategy, because it's the relative path, like from this MQ5 file to the moving average strategy file. And now if I compile this, you can see it works. Everything works fine. And if I now go ahead and um, open the strategy test again, click on visualize, and if I select the program again, it's now in the subfolder here, of course, we will see the multi-strategy tester program is here. We can run it and it should, it should work just as it, as it did before. So all, all I did here in this video, now it did not change like the functionality or the outcome of the program, but it makes the code easier to understand. If you have a look at it, maybe in a month or in two months. And also if you want to add more strategies, um, it will be far easier if you have 
this structure because now I could go ahead and this is the folder where, where I have all the files now. I could say I copy this moving average strategy and I maybe create another file with an RSI strategy and then I could include two files like the moving average strategy and the RSI strategy and I could create more of these objects here and then um, yeah execute more of these functions and if I for example have or we could go ahead and do this for like a lot of symbols like I don't know what what symbols do we have here like um, um, uh, where's my symbol list symbols we can have a look at the what are the major pairs like GBP USD USD Swiss franc we could say we want USD Swiss franc we want the uh, Australian dollar US dollar and USD cut Australian dollar, USD dollar, USD cut. So what we would have to do now is we, we would have to copy this like three times each, fifth, six, and also here and also here. And this is um, okay, but if we would do this for like 20 pairs, it would still be a little bit, I, I don't know. I mean, we would have 20 lines and it would be quite a lot of uh, a hassle to write it for every line. So there's another thing we could do. Like we could go to our class and now I want it to inherit again from um, the C object class because now this will, like the C object class is just another class. Like um, it's, a, it's a base class pretty much for objects. But the good thing is there is a um, another array class that we can use here. It's the array, or oh, arrays, array uh, object class. And if we, come, uh, if we include this, we can now create another, um, oh wait, we should rename this four, five, six. And we can create another um, uh, object here, which is C of type C array object. And we can say, we want to put all of our strategies inside of this array. And, um, this is an, uh, the C array object class. If you have a look at this, it's just another class which um, can hold multiple um, objects pretty much. So what we would have to do is we could now go ahead and say, since we have all of these strategies already created, we can say strategies add, and now we put the strat one inside of this array. And let me delete this and this and this because we will do it a little bit different later. And you can see this does not work because it um, it needs a pointer. So we will have to create a pointer here, uh, right like this. I think we still have to make one more modification. I don't know if it works like this. If we can use the compiler like this, no, we cannot. Um, yeah, like the easiest thing to do is to just take the code from here and just create the uh, pointer here directly. So like this, and now we can do the same thing for all of these uh, major currency pairs, like USD, Japanese Yen, uh, GBP, USD, uh, USD, Swiss franc, Australian dollar USD. And you can see already like this program is not really suitable for it's not really practical for, for use. Um, I mean, this would not be a program that you can sell to anyone because you would kind of have to make um, adjustments to the code if you want to test different strategies. So it's more like a program that you write for yourself to, uh, to test things out. So um, yeah. Oh, wait, and this is of course wrong. We have to write C moving average strategy like this because we want to create these C moving average strategy objects and we want to put them into our strategies array. And what we can do now is we can do like um, for int i is equal to zero and i is smaller than strategies total i plus plus. We can just loop through the array and then call the on, uh, oh wait, yeah. We would have to see C, um, C object. Um, does, this, does this even work? I mean, if we have different strategies, 
Now we would have to create another class first. Yeah, I mean, I will show it only for for the C moving average strategy here now. But um, if you have a little bit of experience with um, object oriented programming, I mean, you you can like create the the, the class where you um, that inherits from the object, and you will create a um, or you you will have to create a um, some more classes like to 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 make this. Um, work with a lot of different strategies. I mean, now I have to uh, say that it is a C moving average strategy here because I only work with this strategy, but if I would use different strategies, I would have to create another like super class for all of these strategies um, that has the, um, uh, the, the on init and on dinit and on tick function as a uh, virtual function. But I will not get into detail here. So we can now use this and call the on init event function and I can copy this block for the on D in it and the on tick and now it doesn't matter how many um, uh, reason how many uh, strategies I have in this array I can also uh, can always use this loop and it's like really it's easy to read I know what happens I know that I execute everything for all of these uh, strategies and stuff and you can see like the the main file or the main uh, MQ5 file that I'm using here, it's super easy to read. So I know exactly what's going on. And if I want to know what's in the C moving average strategy class, I can just have a look at the file. I can read it and everything is like super organized. And yeah, I mean, there might be still one or two steps that you could do to to uh, improve the readability, readability of the program. But I think if you have a look at this program in a month or so, you will easily understand it because it's structured, it's all in one folder and stuff. And yeah, if I test it uh, one more time, one last time, you will see that this program now works. And you can see it here already. It's loading all the major pairs and it will work in all six major pairs now. And it will execute this exact strategies in all of these major pairs. So this is how you can create a program that trades a portfolio for you. and. Again, you could create different strategies, like you could trade like three different strategies in six different markets using this single program. And that's what's so cool about MetaTrader 5 programming. Like if you get the structure right, you can do nearly anything. And even if it is not a, a standard feature of the MetaTrader 5 to test multiple currencies in the same test run, you can still find a workaround like I showed you in this series. So um, yeah. And again, if you want to learn more about automated trading in general or object-oriented programming, like um, I explain all of these things, like or, or the, all the things you have to know about object-oriented programming in my MetaTrader 5 Masterclass course, which you can find if you click on the link below the video in the description box. I think it kind of crashed here. Wait, let me uh, close this window and run it again. Um, but this is not a problem with the with the coding or the program. It's a problem with the meter trader here. So um, yeah, you can see it's it's loading the ticks and everything for all the markets. But now it loaded, and you can see now we have all of these markets here, and they should all open trades now. So you can see like the performance of this program and all of these six markets combined uh, combined, and it's a really cool way to like create this portfolio. And yeah, that's that's it, I think. So let's have a look at the overall performance. I mean, the overall performance might not be that great, but I, this is not about writing a profitable EA. It's more about showing you like concepts of how to work with your programs and portfolios. So yeah, I mean, I could wait until the test is finished, but you can also do it on your PC. Don't know why it is so slow. Okay, it's a little bit faster now. But yeah, I think you get the point. So let me know, like, especially after this tutorial, I know I did not explain anything, not even, I wasn't even close to explaining anything. I kind of flew over some topics because I was kind of directing this series to more advanced programmers. And uh, I, it would take me like 10 hours if I explain everything, like variables, data structures and stuff in tutorials like this. So let me know in the comment section below where you're able to understand what I was saying. Do you want more of these, like more advanced tutorials or should I go back to like basic strategies where I take one indicator and um, talk about how to write a program using this one indicator? That would be really interesting to me. Anyways, if you watched until this point, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope that you were able to learn something and I hope that we will see each other in the next video again. Until then, have a great time. Good trades. Bye-bye.